Despite what some anomalies like Deshaun Jackson may lead you to believe, careers in the NFL are generally short. And in order to make the most of a pretty tight window, NFL stars are looking to burn as brightly as possible from the very beginning of their careers. But as they say, sometimes the brightest stars burn out the fastest. It's hard to believe, but nearly a decade ago, Alabama running back Trent Richardson shined brighter than most, a two-time collegiate national champion and winner of multiple running back awards. As the number three overall pick in 2012, Trent was riding high coming into the league, but after a decent rookie season, everything around dude began to crumble. His personal life was in shambles and his NFL career slip right through his grasp. I did a full profile on Trent's career back in 2017, around the time when I first began what's now become the longest running series on his channel. The quality wasn't what it is today, but I will link that video at the end if you wanna watch. However, if you don't wanna sit through that and I don't blame you, in this video, I'll do a really quick recap to bring you up to speed. So it'll basically serve as a part two to that video I did back in 2017. Trent did bounce back after a really hard fall, but of course his bounce back is subjective as he never again reached the heights of his Alabama days. Some people act like they never took an L in life, and if that's the case, it means you probably never have actually gone for anything worth having. But if you're like most of us and you've held your share of L's the same way you didn't let that L stop you, allow that experience to help you appreciate the comeback efforts of others. So what happens after you're labeled an NFL bust? This is Trent Richardson, where are they now? 2021. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. And some people may not even realize it, but over the course of time, Manscaped has actually grown their product line and they've basically become that all in one go to for men's grooming and hygiene. Now they just launched a new lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer, and now you can get the ultimate Manscaped experience right out the gate by purchasing the Performance Package 4.0 bundle. This all-in-one kit helps to simplify the grooming process, and it includes all the tools you need to stay on point for the full day. With Manscaped, it's easy to do part of your grooming during your morning shower. The new lawnmower 4.0, waterproof ceramic blade, skin-safe tech, close, comfortable shave, no mess. And on this new version, and the blades are actually replaceable and it's got a cool travel lock feature so you can throw it in your bag and forget about it. Now it's got 90 minutes of battery life when it's fully juiced, but when you do need to charge it, throw it into the new wireless docking station, then you're good to go. Now after your shower is done, you're gonna apply the Manscaped Crop Preserver. And this is basically a fast absorbing, quick drying, moisturizing lotion that's gonna keep you fresh for the full day. Then once you get to the middle of the day and you just need a quick refresher, that's what the Manscaped Crop Reviver is for. And it's got both cooling and anti-inflammatory properties. Get all of that plus the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer when you get the Performance Package 4.0 bundle. It's easily the biggest bang for your buck. Now you can also enroll in Manscaped's Peak Hygiene Plan. And with that, you get constant re-ups of your favorite products delivered straight to your door. And just to sweeten the pot a little bit more, for a limited time, you can get two free gifts that's the shared travel bag and the Manscaped anti chafing box of briefs when you get the Performance Package 4.0 bundle. So go to manscaped.com slash flimlo today and get 20% off. You'll also get free international shipping plus the two free gifts we talked about when you use my code flimlo20 at checkout. So join the Manscaped movement today. We're talking man maintenance for the modern day gentleman. Other than that, thanks to Manscaped once again for sponsoring the video. Without further ado, you already know what time it is, fellas. Trent Richardson was a star from the moment he touched the football field. A star recruit coveted by the nation's top college football programs. Before Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Najee Harris, and all the other Alabama running backs who are tearing up the league as we speak. Before all of them, there was Trent Richardson. There was no doubts about it going into the draft. No red flags as his pedigree, production, and testing were all top notch. 5'9", 230 pounds, 4'5", 40, 37 inch vert, 25 reps on the bench, it was all there. The Cleveland Browns traded up to get their first round one running back since 2002. And the now notorious Bill Polian placed Trent on his sure thing prospects list. A list of prospects who were supposedly 
surefire drive hits. Following his rookie season, there were a few reasons for concern as Trent only averaged 3.2 yards per carry, which was the lowest amongst rookie running backs. Some questioned his vision as he would sometimes miss obvious holes, but still these things were easily dismissed as dude was just a rookie, and outside of those two things which were seen as correctable, he actually had a pretty productive year. He rushed for just under a thousand yards and caught 51 passes for 367 receiving yards as well. The most impressive thing about Trent was his ability as a short yardage runner. If you happen to be a fan of a team who has no problems converting third and ones and fourth and goals, you know you need that half a yard to continue your drive or score a touchdown, but the entire defense knows you're running it right up the middle, it's an extremely valuable skill set. But if it's really the only valuable skill set you possess and you get drafted third overall, it's not really enough value to justify that pick. His physical style was perfect for it and he shined in that role. Dude scored 11 touchdowns as a rookie which broke the great Jim Brown's franchise rookie record. But only two games into his sophomore campaign, the Browns traded Trent Richardson to the Indianapolis Colts. And what you think was a better situation going from a losing team at the time to a playoff team. But unfortunately there in Indianapolis on a bigger stage at that time, Trent's vision or lack thereof was on full display for everybody to see. By 2015, the 2012 first rounder was waived. He made the rounds to a few other teams but never saw significant significant playing time. His NFL bus label had been solidified, and for many NFL fans, he ceased to exist. But for Trent, life obviously didn't stop there. A 26-year-old lifelong football star doesn't just all of a sudden lose all of his competitiveness and drive after a few tough years in the NFL. What many people didn't know was that Trent struggled on the field in large part because he lacked the support system off of it. Many other people around him do genuinely cared about and wanted to help, but when his close circle of family and friends spent 1.6 million of his dollars in only a matter of months, all behind Trent's back, the stretch drove dude into a pretty dark place. The pain of having loved ones stab you in the back, all while your lifelong dream is simultaneously slipping away. That's gonna be a tough thing for any person to deal with. Life in the NFL should have been Pro Bowls on the field and happiness and good times off of it. Doing what you love and never having to worry about money. That's the fantasy, right? The reality for Trent Richardson, at least, was literally the opposite. While he did have some early success that first year in the NFL, not only was his love for the game starting to fade just due to the outside circumstances, his success had isolated him from his loved ones. As for many of them, he was no longer just Trent. He was a meal ticket. His NFL career only lasted a few years and a guy who Bill Polian called a can't miss prospect was labeled not only as a bust, but some even called him and I quote, the worst running back of all time. A statement that would hurt any player, but when it comes from a respected NFL veteran that Ryan Clark was at the time, I ain't gonna lie, that statement had to cut pretty damn deep. So at this point, as far as what his expectations were for his NFL career, he's failed. And because he was such a high profile college player and such a high draft pick, his failure in the league was completely magnified and being a great running back was his identity at this time. So just imagine what he's going through. But guess what though? What he did afterwards is literally the reason I'm making this video. It wasn't nothing spectacular. This ain't a movie, it's real life. He didn't hit the lottery and start the next Facebook, but it's more about what he didn't do. He didn't stop, he didn't quit, he kept pushing forward. Trent was determined to get back on the field and he didn't let pride stop him from taking a running back job wherever he could get one. His first Canadian Football League touchdown. He took a gig in the CFL and though he only played four games in his first season, he had a solid showing and improved each week. During those four games, he rushed for 259 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He did well enough to the point where the team wanted to bring him back the following year. It appeared Trent had found a new home, but per usual, Life decided to throw him a major curveball. Trent was stuck in the midst of an ugly custody battle for his kids. And believe it or not, this ended up leading to his release. Here's a quote from Trent's former CFL coach. I talked to Jimmy Sexton, his agent, and I talked to Trent. And it was a situation where he's got four young children at home. He's been in a custody situation and Trent's a really, really good dude. He's a good dad and the opportunity arose for him to take a job with the Birmingham team. 
possibly, or Alabama. I think it's Birmingham in the AAF, the new league. So it was an opportunity for him to go down there and make a living. They wouldn't allow him to cross the border up here and keep his children. So there you have it. Instead of continuing to play in the CFL, a much more stable league, Trent instead took a job in the AAF so that he'd have the opportunity to keep custody of his children. Unfortunately for Trent, his new home in the AAF would soon be completely demolished after only eight weeks of play. Sometimes you just can't catch a break. Still, during his time in the AAF, Trent once again showed his ability to convert in tough short yardage situations. He even led the league in rushing touchdowns with 12. Again, this was in only eight games. League was scheduled for 10 originally. So in 2019, when the AAF shut down, things was pretty sticky for Trent. He was only 29 years old and still had kids to take care of. He turned down a much more secure job in Canada in order to take care of his kids. But then ironically, that decision to join the AAF ends up coming back to bite him. League shuts down, now he loses his job. And it's one of those situations that happen all the time in life. It's like, what is the right choice for Trent to make right there? Like he did the only thing he could do. He made the only choice he could make and still, sometimes it doesn't work out. You know what I'm saying? So the following year rolls around. 2020, crazy year, we all know. Trent had a pretty crazy ride himself. This man had a crazy situation at a damn furniture store. So Trent goes to the store, orders a new set, probably takes weeks to come in, sometimes months at these furniture stores. Finally comes in, the whole set is severely damaged, at least according to Trent. But the furniture store doesn't wanna replace the pieces and they don't want to refund his money. So he goes down to the store to complain. Now check it out, bro. I worked in sales for years. I sold furniture, commission sales, high ticket items. Customers come in pissed off all the time because they are spending a whole bunch of money and things go wrong. Usually what happens, they come in, they make a little bit of a fuss, don't go too crazy. Manager calms them down and then you comp them. You either give them a little percentage off their stuff or you, you fix the situation. They get what they want. They leave happy. Y'all keep the business. But for Trent, it just could not be that simple. The lady at the counter decided she wasn't happy with how he came in there. She pulls a gun on the man and basically runs him out of the store. Insane situation, a whole lot to really unpack with how that whole thing played out. And I think he's in the midst of like a legal situation with that right now. But damn, I literally just wanted furniture and now I'm on TMZ, great. Things eventually turned around as Trent got some traction with his TR3 Youth Sports Alliance, which is basically a youth football league in Alabama. He also took motivational speaking gigs where he could. And these things combined is what seems to have created an opportunity that I don't think Trent saw coming. So earlier this year, Trent Richardson signed with an American football league in Mexico. This is the second American football league over there as the first one popped up about five years ago and has been relatively successful. The Football Americano de Mexico League, AKA FAM, is the league that Trent is involved with. It was started back in 2018 and has expanded to seven total teams. According to Trent, they actually put three guys in the NFL this past year. Now, regardless to that little stat, Chasing NFL dreams is not Trent Richardson's goal in this league. Check out this snippet from the Snacking with Snacks podcast that Trent posted on his IG. No kind of being a loophole was next for T. Rich. Well, yeah, for me, man, I, I do, I do want to shout out the family. Man, it's a new league that I'm working with, and I'm actually going to play there this year. We've been around for two years. This third year, we actually put uh, three guys in the NFL this year, and I'm more on the uh, brand ambassador side. I'm working with the front office, and I'm working on the teams. But we actually got a trial October the 24th uh, in Birmingham. It's going to be at Clay Chalkville. And, man, they try to get guys opportunities in there. And they're paying. There's no salary cap. So you negotiate your own, you know, uh, uh, salary. I mean, they're paying for room and board, uh, transportation. They're giving stipend for food every week. Uh, I mean, people got to realize, too, our dollar is $20 to them. Like, you can go over there and live a good life. You know, look at Stephon Mar Marbury. You know, people counted him out. He went over to China and never went back to the NBA for a reason. And so, you know, you, you, people got to start thinking like that, man. Like, why go deal with a whole bunch of other, you know, shut up and, and just play sports? Or, you know, you can, you know, kind of control how you want your career to go. You can control, you know, having a business built over there. You can control, you know, how you move. I like the fact that he went in with more of the brand ambassador, like marketing side of it. And it sounds like he may play a little bit just to drum up interest from the fans. But I really like the way he's approaching this whole thing. And listen, 
Will this league be successful, bro? I don't know. I've seen tons of leagues come and go. Are they going to be making hundreds of millions of NFL type of dollars? Of course not. And it's literally not the point at all. I believe that how people respond to adversity speaks volume to their character. And when your profile is high and everybody knows about your failures, it can't be easy to hold your chin up and just keep moving, especially when you're forced to take gigs that would have previously been seen as beneath you. But Trent Richardson has never stopped looking for the next thing. He's never stopped being a father to his kids and giving them someone they could look up to to despite his past failures. According to the internet, dude still has a net worth in the multi-millions, which does suggest that he hasn't burnt through all of his NFL money. This leads me to believe that his continual charge forward isn't out of desperation. It's more from a desire to contribute something, make an impact in one way or another. And when you do that, at the end of the day, you can look in the mirror and be proud of what you see. It doesn't change the fact that he's an NFL bust. That is what that is. The point is, being an NFL bust is a minute part of your existence or failing in whatever category you may have failed in. Minute part of your existence. But being the type of man or woman who you can respect, that's what really matters and Trent's doing his thing in that department. He may not be a big time NFL star, but he's made his kids proud of the man he's become. With one son saying this, I'm gonna play football so I can take care of the family so you can stop playing one day. You can't take care of the family forever. He's lit a fire and inspired the next generation of young Richardsons to follow in their dad's footsteps and make something out of themselves. And while his kids may not realize it yet, their dad's also shown them that you don't need to be in the NFL in order to be an inspiration.